Before I get to this video, yes, this is a re-upload. I had to edit this video and re-upload it to remove the previous video's uh, ad spot that I had running on it. Basically, long story short, the ad campaign that I had going on with Plex is no longer going on. Uh, it did really, really, really well. But I'll explain that in another video. I figured while I'm re-uploading this, I might as well re-edit it and add in a few things that I noticed in the comments, questions that I should have answered, but I did not. So I will address those here. First of all, does it have live TV? Yes, it does have live TV. I, I did go in there, I did check it out, I watched a channel and it worked perfectly. So yes, it has live TV. Number two, H.265, does it direct play? Again, yes, surprisingly, actually. Uh, personally, I didn't think it'd work, but hey, it did work. I downloaded an, an HVAC file off of the internet, played it directly with no transcoding, nothing like that. So that's cool. Then I had some people asking about audio pass-through. Now, I have two files that I usually check when it comes to surround sound, just to make sure surround sound was working. Yes, it did check, but this time I also checked to see if it was being transcoded and or you know, being able to direct play. So uh, I tested with DTS HD, and it did play it directly. And I checked it again with True HD, but it transcoded that to EAC3. Now both of them worked, but one had to be transcoded, whereas one did not. So without further ado, here's the video. King box. That was probably not the coolest intro I've ever done. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jason from Buy My Bits. And in today's video, I am reviewing a king box. What is a king box? That's a good question. A king box is this. Now this company reached out to me and they said, hey Jason, do you wanna try this out? It plays media, AKA it plays Plex. So I said, yes. So in full disclosure, yes, they did send me the item for free. I did not pay for it, but my opinions are my own and they did not buy me. So on this channel, I have tested out some different Plex clients before. I like doing so. It's nice just to see what all is out there. Some perform better as far as, you know, how fast they can play video or they can skip forward ahead or maybe the remote is more usable from one box to another, for example. It's like a big deal to me. So testing something like the King Box, especially when it's closely, you know, shaped like one of my favorite Android boxes, the Fire TV, um, you know, I think that's kind of exciting for me, even though I know it's just a media player, but it's kind of cool looking. I know you can barely see it here, so let's roll that B-roll. The A3 King Box is an Android TV box armed with an octa-core ARM Cortex A53 processor, a Mali T8020 MP3 GPU, two gigabytes of DDR RAM, and 16 gigabytes of internal memory. It's 4K compatible, plays of course full 1080p as well, comes packed with Android 6.0 OS, and it has dual Wi-Fi channels, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Not to mention their slogan on the back is, Love home life, make your life colorful. So all that aside, this was kind of an interesting thing because when I got it all hooked up, it did not work. Now, technically speaking, the King Box itself worked. I mean, it, it booted up pretty quickly. The setup process was pretty simple. I had it connected with WAN, so I'm sorry, with LAN, so it was really easy to just get up and running. But it was one of those things that the first thing that I did was go into Plex and, and you know, got it signed in once I remembered my password, because I don't type that in very often. But once I got signed in, got everything set up, it, dis it discovered my server, it didn't work. I mean, it loaded the server, loaded my, you know, the, the TV shows and everything that I have on my server. But when I tried to play a video, it popped up an error, said that it lost communication with my server. So right out of the box, didn't work, a little let down. And I gotta be honest with you, I troubleshooted a little bit, restarted my, restarted my server, uh, restarted the box, did some very basic troubleshooting here, and I just kind of set it aside for a couple days, honestly. But hey, here we are now. I did reapproach that, went on Google, looked around. Apparently, this is probably not related directly to the King Box itself, but it is potentially with just the Android operating system and or the Plex app on the Android operating system. 
it was just an Android thing. And in order to rectify that, I did have to go in and manually, you know, direct it towards my Plex server using the IP address of the internal, the internal IP address of my server. But hey, once I got that going, I was able to go in and play videos like normal. I can say that as I was doing my testing, it was able to skip ahead very quickly. I was definitely impressed by that. It's actually one of the measurements I like to look at first is like how fast can it skip ahead? So that's kind of cool. It loaded the videos up pretty quick. Uh, overall, it was just a, it was a good experience as far as launching and playing a video. Now, considering that this box at the time of this video, I think it was like $79.99. I don't know, I will definitely link to it in the description below. Uh, for $79.99, you get a fully functional Android TV box with an octa-core processor and presumably a pretty decent performing GPU and is completely capable of playing high resolution videos without any choppiness, including fast forwarding and we re rewind. That's a pretty good deal. I mean, honestly, I'm not saying it's the best deal or it's the only deal, but it's still a good deal. And on top of that, you also get a couple different remotes. This is just the basic remote, what you can use to, you know, use it as a daily, or it actually comes with this. This is kind of cool. Now it's a little flimsy kind of getting used to using it, but I do like that uh, unlike a different, you know, keyboard, wireless keyboard thing that I, uh, I reviewed a little bit ago on a micro PC, the buttons here are actually firm rather than like soft. So you don't have to like push way too hard in order to get to work. The only thing I can say is that this little, you know, built in mouse thing that comes with it is a little, I want to say awkward to get used to or just kind of interesting because I think it just depends on how fast you move and it doesn't always go the same distance. Sometimes when you swipe it, you go too fast and it doesn't move very much. Or if you go just, just the right fastness, it goes a lot farther. But overall, you don't really need it a whole lot, although it is nice to be able to type in your passwords with this, even though you can do it with a remote. I still think it's pretty cool to have, you know, both the remote and the wireless, you know, keyboard that comes with one device. And this is like rechargeable. It has like, you know, a cell phone battery in it. So that's kind of cool, I guess. So. The media box itself, the menu is responsive. It was able to download and install the Plex application pretty decent. I went through and I ran some other basic apps, but I really did not benchmark or test anything else on it because honestly, I don't care about anything else on it. I just want to see how well Plex ran. Now, when I went in and I was browsing through the different movies and I was trying to scroll more quickly, uh, you know, like let's say you're trying to get to a certain, you know, movie that's underneath the seas, for example, uh, I was seeing a little bit of lag when it came to poster load times. It's nothing that's going to ruin the experience. Now, with that said, I do have to say this, I, I, I gave it, you know, flying colors as far as being able to install, launch, browse, all that stuff when it comes to Plex. The only thing that bugs me about this, and I'm gonna have to compare this to the Fire TV, the only thing that bugs me about this is Android. Now bear with me now, Android, the Fire TV, Android is installed on the Fire TV. However, Amazon took the Fire TV and they basically, you know, customized Android to be, you know, solely operable on this without the use of, you know, like an on-screen mouse or any kind of extra special buttons. I mean, it is really built just for the Fire TV. This, on the other hand, it's like they took almost a vanilla version of Android, slapped their logo on it, and installed it on this box. I mean, that's basically what I think. I mean, I really think it was just cheap. I'm not saying that's bad. I just think that they kind of cut corners when it came to the operating system. And, and here's why. Because as you're navigating through, you do have to use this little mouse button just a, a few times in order to access certain menus or items. And it may be completely possible that you could use your up and down to you know, go through menus and find out how to get to where you need to go. But the thing is, is that while I was using it and while I was trying to figure it out, it wasn't apparent to me. Whereas something like the Fire TV, everything's very apparent. Like you think you want to go up here, so you click up and it takes you up there. You want to get over here, you click left, it takes you up here. This one, well, you kind of have to do like A, B, A, B, left, right, left, right, down or something, you know, and it's like, I just hate this. So I found myself switching back and forth as I was kind of exploring the Plex application, doing you know some of my tests, stuff like that, where I was clicking this little mouse button and that allows you to use this up, down, left, right arrow uh, keypad and the okay button here is the basically a mouse click to you know pretty much take me to the area of the screen that was otherwise unaccessible by the regular up, down, left, right. Which again, this isn't necessarily a sh uh, showstopper. I was getting into some things that you know, it was not like a daily driver usage type thing. So um, that's why I don't really, 
I don't, I don't really find it as a major fault, um, but it was kind of an annoyance to me. Whereas something like the Fire TV, I mean, it really is built to use just a remote and the Fire TV has a super simple remote. So not only is it built to use that remote, it's built to be super simple. Maybe it's unfair to compare, you know, a billion dollar Amazon company box to something like a King box, but when I have to use that as a basis of comparison, it is what it is. So, okay, I don't really have to use it, but I am. But on that note, again, this goes back to the wireless keyboard. Uh, you, when you have to go through and you have to type out, you know, like a password or something to log in, you can go in here and up, down, left, right, just like normal. Um, and then you have to switch mouse to, to go back up to click OK. You know, so it is a little cumbersome in order to work around that. Thankfully, unless you're using this as just like a regular web browser, you're probably not going to be doing a lot of typing. But if you ever did want to, you definitely have some extra options with this where you can hit enter, you can hit delete, you know, it, it, you get a lot more options with this. So that is nice. I think the only thing I don't like um, when it comes to the remote is that it is a line of sight. And again, I know this is unfair, but you know, something like the Fire TV, it's not line of sight. It just uses, you know, Bluetooth or whatever it is that they use to connect. Uh, this is not line of sight, but this is line of sight. So just keep that in mind. But the remotes are responsive. They don't seem like they lag behind very much, if at all. Um, so overall, I'm happy with them. As long as you have line of sight and that doesn't bother you, you should be good to go. Included on the back, you do have an audio optical connection. Uh, you know, you have your regular ethernet port, HDMI, two USBs, and you can, yep, you have an expandable storage on the side here. So it's got all the basic stuff that you would need, you know, for something like this. I mean, there's really no complaints there. I really like the idea. Uh, if I had anything that I would say that I would want this to be better, it's not the speed, it's not the storage. I mean, all that is pretty good and or can be expanded. I would just like to see a more customized version that is, you know, more suited for direct use of, a, a, of just a regular remote. That's really the only complaint that I would really have about the King Box. But hey, for 80 bucks, you get a fully functional Android device that plugs right into your TV. You can browse YouTube or websites with a wireless keyboard, and it's pretty snappy for what it is. So if you guys want to learn more and or get up to date pricing, I will throw some links in the description for you to check it out. Or for that matter, if you have any questions regarding the King Box, throw them down below. I will see if I can answer them for you. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate every single one of you. Like and subscribe below, and have a good day.